Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Today again we hear from the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah li lived about 600 years before Jesus came. And he's preaching to the people, and I imagine that when they heard this, I, I imagine he did it by voice, he also did it by writing it down. But when he, when he said these words, I imagine they said, well, what is he talking about? He's, he says, hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him, and will keep him as a shepherd of flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob, and has redeemed him from the hands too strong for him. And then a little further down, I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow, says the Lord. And they looked at that and said, well, we're already settled in, in our land. What's going on here? Well, within, within about 14 years, Nebuchadnezzar came through and took all those people away from their country and took them to Babylon. Now they're exiles. Now they're slaves up there. And all of a sudden they look back on Jeremiah and say, he's going to bring us back? When's that going to happen? And they had to have lots of faith to hold on to that because it took 48 years before Cyrus the Persian came in and all of a sudden let them all go back to their place. So 48 years, what is that, a couple of generations, uh, had to live there and then realize that Jeremiah had said this and then the prophecy was fulfilled when they went back to their country. There's another breach that affects all of us. I think Satan has taken the human race away, had taken it away, through sin, through the sin of Adam and Eve, and through the sins that we contribute. Satan has held us captive, and our Lord comes and says, I will bring you back. And that's what we celebrate right now. We celebrate that coming of the Lord into our into our into ourselves. He's coming to bring us back. He is fulfilling the prophecy right now that we are his, he is ours. It goes on in the scriptures from today. In our collect today, we pray the following. O God, who wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature, Grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity. Isn't that neat? He first of all created us, wonderfully created us. And after he created us and looked down and saw that all was good, what did we do with it? We messed, messed it up. And what did he do after that? He comes in and recreates it. He creates it anew. By giving us a chance to get rid of that sin, and come back into a full relationship with him. Back to the pristine beauty that he created. And all we have to do is follow him and accept him and let him come in. Grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity. If you watch at the altar, when Sue will take the chalice and pour the wine into the chalice, she takes the water and pours just a little bit of water in there. And there's a prayer that can go along with that. And the prayer goes this way. By the mixing of this water and wine, may we become partakers of his divinity who became a partaker of our humanity. That's actually profound. You notice what that little bitty water goes into that, that wine? It just gets mixed all in, and you could never begin to pull it back out. The water means us. The wine is Jesus. And we're poured into him, become a part of him because he chose to become a part of us. Some people look at the physical and saying that the physical is, is rotten and the physical is awful. Only the spiritual matters. No way. Jesus became physical, a physical being, one just like us. And he sanctified this physical being just by being part of it. He comes in with his divinity in order to bring us out of our humanity back into the divinity. It's just, it's just the most marvelous thing that we can just keep in our heads. Paul says it this way to the people today in Ephesus. He says, I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, 
may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him. So that with eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power to us who believe? The great power to us who believe. He's praying that we're going to start to make that part of us. Not just something we do on Sunday, but something that lives, lives to us all week long. That God is with us. His divinity has come down and taken on humanity so that he can pull us out of our humanity back into the divinity. We call us the mystical body of Christ. Christ is divine. So we have that divine right within us. We are accepted as divine because God the Father looks down and who does he see? He sees his son, but also he sees his son's mystical body. That's us. God the Father cannot reject his son. Consequently, he will not reject us. It's the most marvelous thing. In, in, the, uh, in our morning prayer, at the end of the morning prayer, there's a chance to pray another thing from Ephesians. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. We are, we are equipped with a powerhouse from the Lord, and nothing is beyond our, our grasp. Nothing is beyond our means because we rely on the Lord. All things are possible through the Lord Jesus Christ. He chose to come down, take on our humanity, to lift our humanity up into the divinity. That's a profound statement in a profound place where we live. Let that seep into our hearts and sink in and have us acknowledge it, accept it, and live it.